Hi, good day, everyone. Welcome to the Heineken Champions League preview show. We've started with 32 teams in this year's UCL. We are now down to two. Two English sides who are going to be battling it out to be crowned the biggest club in Europe. With me to discuss how that final may go is yet again Duncan Saul of Starbuck News and Raul Tony of the Guyana Chronicle and NCN. Guys, it's been a tremendous mm. tournament. Uh, obviously, COVID would have played its part in the early start of the tournament, but it seems the football has striked back and it's been beautiful action. But before we get cracking into how that final may go, you know, from a guy's perspective, lots of Chelsea fans, lots of Man City fans, but I want to do a quick recap about how those semifinals may go. Duncan so far, and just for the betting fans out there, Listen to Duncan. He got both semi-final ties correctly. It's true, it's true. I only got one. I picked Chelsea ahead of Real. Uh, but City got the better of Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, surprising for me, but they played well. They deserved the victory. Let's do a quick recap, though. 4-1 uh, on the aggregate for Man City against PSG. Quite surprising that a, a team of that quality in terms of PSG, the amount of stars, they couldn't have gotten more goals, Duncan? No, it was a case of matchups. And I've always looked at the numbers. I've always looked at the history. And the history said that PSG would struggle against a possession-based offensive team. And we've seen that in their previous meetings with clubs like Barcelona, that they have struggled before. And City obviously owns the historical um, aspects against them. So it, it was an easy bet for me. Well, well it wasn't for me. I, I looked at the fact that City would have had I, well, failed in the two, in the previous Champions League, but when I when I as Duncan would have said, he came down to match up, and I, I guess City was a better team on that day. Your side, uh, I, I call them the kings of the Champions League. Yeah, Real Madrid. Uh, they, they certainly were well played, to be honest. Uh, yeah, against but the tactics of Thomas Tuchel, Chelsea really looked. Uh, better than we all in all departments. Yeah, that, the that, aggregate. that is true. And and you have to give credit to Chelsea. I didn't have Chelsea to win the game because of the Champions League and it being Real Madrid and taking into account everything that they would have went through. Chelsea, but truth be told, Chelsea did have a, a, well, a tougher part to me to the final, or to the UCL, UCL final. And it's been amazing to see what Thomas Tuchel would have been able to, what, what he has gotten out of them so far. And he has one of the most... I should say, probably the best team defensively, especially in that defensive third with Rudiger and and and, and Golo Kante um, anchoring that defense and two players who can push forward and help create chances as well. So I think he used that to his advantage because if you look at the possession numbers within that midfield, especially the, the attacking midfield area, um, it's quite significant in all their matches since he would have taken over as well. So obviously, and he has you know players like Timo Hoano, looking world-class and exceptional as well. So he, he has been able to get more out of his players. So kudos to Chelsea um, over Real Madrid and getting to the final against City, an all-English final. Well, this one, this one I felt good about because if you, once again, I looked at the numbers. Um, Chelsea, best defensive record heading into the semifinals. And this match exposed um, Thomas Tuchel's superior tactical acumen over Zinedine Zidane. And if you look at the squads, they're similar. But Chelsea just had everything on the day. Stay tuned for more. Remember, this show is sponsored by Heineken Beer and the Blast Gaming Center here on Mandela Avenue. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April. You're shot down in May. Gonna roll myself up in a big ball and fly. Nobody on the post there. Going to do it costly. Yes, it is. But I'm not saying it is. You just get ahead of it. Oh, no, that's so insane, isn't it? Let's Bet Sports take your game to a whole new level. Who do you say? 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 Who do
Offside! Yeah! Was that a goal? Over. For as little as $200 to $1,000, you can scratch your way to instant cash and win $200,000 to $3 million instantly. Need quick cash? Then buy a scratch ticket. Buy as many scratch tickets as you like and scratch your way to instant cash. Simply scratch and reveal if you're a winner. Play scratch for your chance at winning instant cash. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Welcome back. I promise you on the first side of the break that we're going to be speaking about that big final, Manchester City versus Chelsea on Saturday, the big UCL final. Fellas, this is the first final for City. A lot of money. I did some, some reading. A lot of money. I, I look at the financial structure behind City mm -hmm. have gone into getting to this stage. They, they, they're one of the richest clubs in Europe and they've spent big. Uh, one thing though, they seem to be lacking that experience in terms of, you know, big name players would have had this experience in playing mm -hmm. Champions League final. Because one of the players would have previously played in Champions League final. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, Pep getting to two, winning two UCLs already with Barcelona. Tell us, tell me, Tony, how do you see the City alone shaping up for this big final? I think what they have on their side for the game, and, and, and later on, I guess we will deal with, with our, our prediction, but I think what they have on their side is a coach who would have been here before and knew what it takes to win the final. In fact, one of those Champions League finals that Pep would have won, he, he had to go through Real Madrid in the semifinal as well, too. And that was an prime Real Madrid squad, all right, with Ronaldo and everyone there. So... Pep knows how to win at the Champions League. It's an entirely different game, as you would have seen in the Euro final with Manchester United and um, uh, how Manchester United would have lost in the Euro final as well. So it came, it would, would come down to tactics because remember, there's nothing after this. This is where it all, this is, this is where it all ends. But you're right, Manchester City was built not just for the English Premier League. When they got to the Champions League after they, um, sorry, when they got to promoted to the Premier League, when the with the new owners they spent money to build a european squad not a squad to just compete within the within within the epl i mean they have conquered the epl how many more titles must they win to solidify that they are the best team in england but also they need now to conquer europe and this is what i believe the owners would have spent a lot of money on and i mean billions of dollars on over the years and you're right about experienced players at this just one player from that squad would have been would have experienced Champions League and what it takes to win in the final. So I guess that's what the advantage, one of the advantage that City would have over Chelsea in the Champions League final. And um, you cannot count out Pep's experience and knowing how to get much out of star players at this stage. Duncan, again, it's difficult to factor in the season in the Premier League. Why? Because of just a vast difference. You look at uh, Liverpool and, and, and how they played in the two different leagues. But judging City, just on City's side, how do you see the, the, the shape? You know? and, and I ask this because I believe the pressure is even more on City to deliver a title than Chelsea. Of course it is. Um, you use the operative word built. They've spent mm -hmm. close to 1 billion euros just to assemble the squad. So if they don't win, it's another failure against mm -hmm. Pep Guardiola and their owners because Chelsea cannot compete with City's financial um, capacity. No. That's a fact. Yeah. But um, City is more experienced, but Chelsea is more battle-hardened. Mm -hmm. If you look at the type of players that Chelsea have in comparison mm -hmm. to the players that City have, you know, it's going to be an interesting game. But City is the favorite. They're expected to win. And if they don't win, it'll definitely be another black mark against uh, I think C City's favoritism stems mostly from Pep, that, that's to be fair. But if you want to go head-to-head, -head, players for players, and as Duncan would have pointed out, you know, players who are ready for the battle on the day, I think a lot will be riding on, on Chelsea in that regard. How, how much did you read into the fact that uh, Chelsea would have lost, would have won their last two matches in all competitions against City? Is that, a, is that a big thing we should play into? Um, I would say no. Uh, taking into consideration that, I mean, the last laugh, City still had the last laugh because they hoisted the, the English trophy. But I would say no simply because, I believe, this is just me, that on this day a lot, is, a lot of history is, is put aside. Because on this day, history is created in its own little way, one way or the other. But if you look at 
City and Chelsea coming into this game, though, I, a lot of persons would not take the last two outings into consideration, especially the bookmakers, because a lot, a, a lot could change by time kickoff. You understand, um, players being healthy um, takes a lot into consideration when going head to head as well too. Um, tactics of, of, of players and two that City is coming into this one with a successful season as well. So I wouldn't look, I wouldn't use their two previous outings for, uh, well, I should say, as history. Even though history would show that Real Madrid has never really gotten past Chelsea, and it did, history was. History was right I get when the two sides meet. So it, it kind of goes hand in hand, but I would not use that as my means of coming up for the winner. We spoke about uh, Pep. Uh, he has a bit of history. Could happen if he wins. Uh, the sixth coach to win the, the European, uh, European title with two different clubs. And the set time, uh, Tuchel is going to be the first coach to carry two uh, teams, back-to-back, -back, different teams, back-to-back -back in a Champions League final. Duncan, we rate Pep as, as a mastermind, but it's set time. You know, Tuchel is doing something really great, and, and he's been the biggest transformation be, behind Chelsea. I am a history buff, and I tend to side with history. Um, Chelsea, Chelsea definitely has a little bit of history going into this match, and Tuchel is a part of that history. Back-to-back -back, um, Champions League finals appearances with two different clubs. He owns Pep Guardiola at least this year with the two head-to-head -head matchups. But you can make the argument that Chelsea is also struggling heading into the final because they lost three in the last mm -hmm. five matches. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. But I think Tuchel needs to be praised for what he's done. Lampard had the same team. And it's looked like night and day between the two managers in terms of how they've been able to prepare um, their respective sides. I mean, there were some arguments of Pep Guardiola's um, coaching and to say that, you know, you only had stars. You never really took a team that's struggling. Like, for example, like a Chelsea, like took, a, took over Chelsea when Chelsea was bad. Um, if you look at where they were in the, in the English Premier League and in the Champions League as well, when he came into the squad, people had written them off and he brought new life into it. A lot of persons are saying they've never seen that with Pep Guardiola. However, I, I would counter their argument and stating it's not easy coaching talent and superior play, superstars. Yeah. It's really not because you have to manage egos. You have to have the trust of those players to do exactly what you want them to do and not what they believe is right on the pitch, even though they might be the ones that people are coming to see. So I would give Pep, I would give Pep the edge over, over Thomas Tuchel, but Tuchel has been doing something, something amazing. There's something, in, there's something in the water in yeah. London. Yeah, and... That, 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 that difference you spoke about is a similarity between the two because there's an interesting stat about the fact that these two sets in 2006 in Arsenal and Barcelona would have played. They have conceded the least amount of goals when they knock out saves these two sides. Mm -hmm. So that is something I want to touch about. Their defensive skill, both sides, yeah. are, are so superb thus far. And that is where I'm wondering where does the break come between two sides that have shown great defensive strength against quality opposition. Oh. Well, they defend differently. If you look at Tuchel, he plays with a 3-4-3, and they defend with uh, two blocks. Yeah. Pep, on the other hand, plays 4-3-3, and, and he defends by utilizing the press and possession. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a, a boxer meets a counter-puncher here. Mm -hmm. That's the matchup, basically. They're, they're both possession-based offenses, but maybe not against each other, because one team will have to have the lion's share, and that will be City. And if you look at the FA Cup matchup, that's a blueprint of how the game is going to play. Yeah. Chelsea's going to sit in the block, and wait for them, and try to counter. Yeah, and, and about where, where Chelsea is superior, def well, I should say defensive offensively, is in, the, in, is in the defensive third. Because you have Rudiger on one side, you have N'Golo Kante on the other or in the middle. And put the, based on how Pep plays, as we would have seen in the FA Cup, once it, the slightest mistake made, made in the middle, that's it. Because Kante is very superior on the ball and he, could get, he gets back. And he could go forward and create as well, too. And we all see what happens when N'Golo Kante picks up a ball and decides to press. And as Duncan would have pointed out, how Pep plays, he utilizes his strength. Most of the teams that he would have coached, he had superior forwards. Like in the Barcelona and then now at City, you know, they're known for scoring a lot of goals in the league. So and he utilizes that to his advantage. But in the middle, I believe that's where Chelsea has the advantage. And I believe that that's where Chelsea stand a chance of winning the game, as we would have seen it happen between the two sides before. Before we go to the break, you're going to hear about two fans, Tristan Joseph and Vishal Singh, a national cricketer, about their opinions. Obviously, Tristan 
is a, a huge Chelsea fan and he gave his opinion and also Vishal Singh about how Man City are probably going to win this title. Yeah, definitely. I think it's great uh, getting to the final since 2012. It's been a long time. I think Chelsea have a, a really good chance, a punchless chance, I would say. Of course, Man City's favorite against uh, Chelsea, but I think they have a punchless chance against this team. I think what will stand out for them is the defense and how they play in the midfield as well. Our problem has been uh, scoring goals, um, but I think uh, with, with Mendy back and Kante back, uh, the team is fit. Uh, and that should prove uh, good for them as well, a bonus to them. Um, the only problem is uh, take, playing, getting goals. I think we need Giroud to play in this game. He's always been proven to have uh, to score goals in big matches in finals. And I think he will, he might be crucial. I'm not sure if Tuchel would play him, but I think he's going to be crucial. I think Kai Havertz, he is going to play a crucial part. Uh, and as well, Mason Mount, who, who's been phenomenal all, all season long. Timo Warner, we need him to play well. Um, He's been one of the persons missing a lot of chances, playing offside goals. But if he can somehow have some semblance of form that he have had in in the Bundesliga, I think Chelsea will will win this game. Um, I think if Chelsea scores first, it's going to be a tough game for Man City. If Man City scores first, I think it's going to open a lot of holes for Man City to score a lot more goals. But I think it's going to be a good game. Kante is crucial. I think his return is, is important. Mendy back, um, in, well, not in front of goal, but of course, guarding the goal for Chelsea is another big bonus for, for, for the Blues. So um, I think it's going to be a great match at, at the end of the day. And I think Chelsea has a really good shot of taking their second Champions League victory. I think this is the position that myself and all the City fans have been waiting for for a very long time. The, the moment we'll be waiting for for a very long time is winning the Champions League, obviously. But this is the position that we've been waiting for, to be in the finals. Again, I see Kevin De Bruyne, Real Mahrez, Phil Foden. Those guys will play integral role once uh, Pep continues to play that false nine formation. If he does play a striker up front, it would be a fairy tale ending for Sergio Aguero to play, get a goal in the Champions League final and help City to, to win. Um, saying that, the most integral role, I think, will fall at the hands of Fernandinho in the midfield, as well as Ruben Diaz and John Stones in the defence. As Chelsea will more than likely play very deep, um, defend and then look to break and, and hit us on the counter. And Fernandinho will be the guy to break up those counter-attacks um, in the middle of the park. But yeah, that's that's how I see the game going. I, I would envision as something along the lines of 3-0, 3-1. I think if Chelsea do score a, a goal, it will be a consolation. Um, as I don't think they've been very prolific up front as of late. And how the defence have been playing. Um, we've played very good defence once our full strength squad uh, plays together. So yeah, that's how I see it going. Um, good luck to everyone. Both Chelsea and Manchester City. Both fans. It's a professional game. Um, both are big game players, big team players. Um, so you never know who can turn up on a day. But as a City fan, this is what I would like to see. A 3 nil or a 3-1. Thanks.
what all the people say You're riding high in April You're shot down in May And if I didn't think it was worth one try I'm gonna roll myself up In a big ball And fly Welcome back to the Heineken's Champions League preview show brought to you in partnership by Anselm McCall Trading through the Heineken Bay brand and the Blast Gaming Center here on Mandela Avenue. On the other side of the break, you would have heard Tristan Joseph and Vishal Singh, two super fans of the two super teams of England that are in the UCL final. One part we spoke about, we're going to be talking about it this side of the break, are the key players. The players make it all happen. They're the matchmakers. And while, you know, Pep and Tuchel are certainly great tacticians, it's the players you have to execute. And we're going to start off by talking about City. Uh, who, who are some guys that, look, we spend big money to, to get them. It's time for the deliver. Given that, look, we, we spoke about it earlier. City have spent the big money to get here. Who are the players now that they have spent that big money on that have to deliver to them? Duncan. Okay, I'll take the lead on this one. Um, <laughs> Ruben Diaz. I think um, yeah. defensively, Ruben Diaz will be key. They brought him in and he has automatically transformed that back line because prior to, the, prior to his acquisition, they were conceding goals at an indifferent rate. Mm -hmm. And since he's come into the squad, you know, he solidified that back line. Offensively, Kevin De Bruyne. It, it lives or dies with Kevin De Bruyne. And I would expect him to be the talisman going forward. He is expected to deliver. They spent big money to, to get him from Wolfsburg several years prior and he hasn't really produced in the Champions League and that is simply the fact that they haven't made a Champions League final since then. Sergio Aguero might want to sign off on a high note before heading to Barcelona so he might also be critical because given the fact that Chelsea plays with a back three uh, a, a genuine number nine will be needed in this match to be able to hold up play and be able to uh, live in the, in, in the six yard area. What about, what about John Stones and Kai Walker against PSG the two were were, were superb, you know, they, they, they closed on all the attempted box base, especially Stones uh, against uh, Di Maria. You know, he, he was great in that regards. Mm -hmm. How do you see those two, or maybe familiarity between the two sides may, may play out that factor, well, but how do you see that? Well, goal? familiarity breeds contempt. Um, in this matchup, and given the fact that Ruben Diaz is there, it will allow um, Bojan Stones and Kyle Walker to play with a little bit more freedom to be able to execute a little better. Because, per, as I said, prior to his acquisition, they were at sixes and sevens that back line. But they will be key as well because obviously a, a defense moves as a unit. But Ruben Diaz is the pillar in that back line. I, I, I would go with, I think this is an audition for Barcelona, for Sergio Aguero. Whilst he would want to, if he would want to stay, um, or would want to leave, he would want to leave on a high note at Man for Manchester City and the France. Um, so I would say Aguero. I would go with also Ryan Sterling as well. Um, Kevin De Bruyne definitely would want to step up in this one. He hasn't been, you know, where a lot of he hasn't been playing the way in which we know that he could play. Like we see, him, we know what he what he does in Belgium, but we want to see what you could do at Manchester City on a big stage. So. Uh, I would go with Aguero, I would go with uh, the skipper, the Brazilian skipper as well, and also would definitely go with the Jamaican Ryan Sterling. On, on the other side, uh, Thiago Silva, I was reading that he was the, he's the only player, he was the captain of PSG last year when mm -hmm. uh, Bayern Munich would have needled them in the final, and I'm up more certain he is going to want to get his hands on the choices for. So on a Chelsea point of view, they're going to have some guys that are really looking you know, to make a mark, at least from, from that point of view. You know, and we could you now go into depth about other players you believe that are going to be key for Chelsea. Well, Thiago has never won the Champions League. Even his days at AC Milan and then he transferred to PSG, yeah. they've always struggled. But um, half the world um, is covered by N'Golo Kante. The other, <laughs> half, the other half is covered by the, the other members of the backline. So uh, N'Golo Kante, Chelsea's going to live and die by N'Golo Kante. Yeah. Because he's the best box-to-box -box midfielder in the world, arguably, right now. He, yeah. he breaks the lines better than everyone else, mm -hmm. and he's much more technical than people give him credit for. Ask Real Madrid, ask Luka Modric, ask Casemiro. He's that good. <laughs> Who um, doesn't want to hear what the other play, The other player that really has transformed since Tuchel's arrival is Rudiger. Yeah. He was on the periphery basically when um, Lampard was there, and mm -hmm. you can understand why English coaches don't win at the European level. And he's transformed Rudiger. 
I'm, but the secret guy, I think, the, 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 one of the key weapons are, is going to be Kai Havertz in conjunction with Christian Pulisic. I think a lot of people don't recognize Kai Havertz is a hybrid attacker. He can play the number 9, he can play the number 10, he can play the number 11, and he's going to be key. I think Chelsea's going to utilize the same formation and players that he used against Real Madrid in the first half. Yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea is the quicker team. If you look at Pulisic, Timo Warner, um, N'Golo Kante, Rudiger is a, is a big defender, but he's very quick especially getting back and also in many cases going forward down that wing. So, and it, it, it comes down to if they start Pulisic or not, because we saw him come off the bench and create chances and won games against Manchester City before as well too. So for this one, Chelsea, for me, attacking wise, attacking wise as a, as a, as a, as a unit, they have the, I would give them the advantage over Manchester City. There's more individual talent for me, I believe on City and going forward. Um, but for Chelsea, I think as Duncan would have said, half the globe is, is covered by N'Golo Kante. I, I know we would go down to a prediction for the game between Duncan and I. Um, don't believe I'm saying this. Hopefully I don't have a dry cough in saying this. We're gonna come back to the park. We're gonna come back to the park. By saying it, but um, I'll go with Chelsea in, in terms of their individual talent and so forth and, and, and the players that they have and also we cannot, I can't un underscore what Thomas Tuka would have gotten from that team. Stay tuned, more after the break. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April, you're shot down in May. You can scratch your way to instant cash and win $200,000 to $3 million instantly. Need quick cash? Then buy a scratch ticket. Buy as many scratch tickets as you like and scratch your way to instant cash. Simply scratch and reveal if you're a winner. Play scratch for your chance at winning instant cash. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Welcome back to the Heineken Champions League preview show. We are previewing the big final taking place, Manchester City against Chelsea. We've heard all about the tactics we believe the two sides may impose against each other in, in, the, in the biggest, probably biggest, apart from the, the World Cup, obviously. I must say, this has to be you know, the biggest final in football. And the big thing everybody usually wants to hear is the scoring predictions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb, and mm -hmm. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and believe that the game has three goals, but I believe at end of regulation time, it's going to be one all. I don't, especially with English teams, I don't believe we usually get those big high scoring finals. We have seen it in years gone by, especially recently with Liverpool and Tottenham. A one all, a one all win for Liverpool. I don't see a high scoring final. I was going to say this. However, to much dislike, I believe Chelsea are going to win this title. I, I, I just believe in a gut feeling. Chelsea are going to win this. I'm going to leave it over to you guys to decide how scores may go. But I believe it could be 2-1 at the end of regulation. Yeah. But one thing though, Chelsea in, in about two of their uh, finals, they've gone to penalty kicks. So that could be another factor under consideration. But I believe Chelsea are going to win. Duncan? I have to pick, right? Given the history, given the records, I'm going to go with Chelsea on this one. I think 
while Pep might be searching for a little history here, we haven't seen a, a maiden finalist win since 2012, which was interesting enough, Chelsea. I have to go all the way back to Port, um, to Dom, Bush and Dortmund 97 for that to occur again. Um, Chelsea has the edge simply because they've been there before. They know what it takes. Even though Guardiola was experienced, Chelsea just seems to have his number. I go with Chelsea on this one. I go with Chelsea, and, and I'll go as far as saying we'll have five goals scored in this game. Wow! I would even say I would even five use goals. yes, 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 yes. I would say five goals in in favor of Chelsea. Three goals to two. I see Aguero on the score line, either either. I see Aguero on the score on the score sheets. I see I see uh, Ryan Sterling on the score sheet, and I also see Kevin De Bruyne on the score sheet. However, I see two goals scored for Chelsea. On the other side, I see Timo Werner on the score sheet. I see Christian Pulisic on the score sheet as well. And just because of the season that he would have had, he's not known for scoring a lot of goals. But I hope that N'Golo Kante could get up there as well. However, if he's not on the score sheet, I see his involvement in a couple of goals for Chelsea as well. So I'm going as far out to say five goals scored in this game, even though the two sides aren't really known for, for scoring a lot of goals against, against each other. Um, but with what's at stake, I'll go 3-2 Chelsea. I'm definitely not going to go at five goals. I think that's, I, I think personally yeah. that's a little too much. I think Tony really likes, really dislikes one of these teams with the uh, five goal. You're because I'll be betting on money. All right, I'm going five goals with this one. It, it is going to be a competitive match. Yeah. You'd have to go to back to 94 for a, for a non-competitive Champions League yeah. games. And as you know, English teams always, when they meet, it's always a KG affair. It's always a tactical affair. And I, teams, I think it's going to change yeah. with these two. A, a bit, a bit. It will be, I, I will say this though, it will be better than Liverpool and Tottenham. I believe that. I think Liverpool versus Tottenham, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think I think if more we, tactical. I think if we play, it'll be better than Liverpool versus Tottenham. Yeah, but, um, more tactical. This is definitely more tactical game. I think Chelsea is going to edge them. That's all. I mean, there's a lot of Chelsea fans, so I, I got to be very careful, uh, you know, with them. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. I, I really enjoyed uh, being with you guys for the three shows: the quarterfinal, the semifinal, and now the final. You have the consensus there. Chelsea, from the three of us, are going to lift this year's. Uh, UCL title. I take one of my camera guys, uh, Richard Jack, he's a, he's a huge Man City fan. So any any bloopers pop up, you know he was angry about us. But for you, the fans out there, do enjoy a safe viewing of this year's Champions League. Thanks to our sponsors, Anselm Call Trading through the Heineken Beer brand. And obviously, the Guy Lottery Company and their Blast Gaming Center here, where we shot all three shows on the Mandela Avenue location. Chelsea for the win. Do safe, guys.